Crafty Meraki friends, welcome back to the YouTube channel. My name is Aditi and I am back with inspiration for y'all. This week on Crafty Meraki, we are celebrating the love for foiling. And I have some tips and tricks of foiling without having a laminator or a hot foil system. So let's dive right in. Today for my card, I will be using the Under the Mistletoe background stamp and iris dies to create the focal element. Although this is Christmassy, I am going to show you how it makes for a perfect background for any kind of a card. I think a stamp like this just works brilliantly for all season, all occasion cards. Now for our foiling first, we will be using the bonding powder from WOW and this is a powder that when melted and when hot allows us to apply foil over it. So this is something that I will be using first to create my foiled background. Since it's a large stamp, I am going to be using my stamping platform so that I know that I have good coverage of the stamp. And I have a piece of 5 by 7 cardstock here so that I can stamp the entire background panel and then I can always trim it for my cards. With this one background, I will show you how we create two cards. Now, ideally, it would be good to have a larger piece of cardstock so I can hold that down in place with the magnets. But not to worry, what I am actually going to do is lift the stamp, have it all aligned. And use washi tape to adhere this piece of paper down on my stamping platform. So with that, the paper is done in place. Now I will be using the embossing ink pad to stamp this image. Now the idea of using a stamping platform with such a large image is that you're never too sure of having stamped the entire image. And so to avoid that, when we use a stamping platform, we can go over about two or three times and that ensures good coverage and crisp stamping, especially when using an embossing ink because it's very hard to see the stamped image. So my first attempt, nicely giving it a push ensuring that I have good coverage there. Now my second stamping, just so I know I have a lot of ink there so that when I apply the bonding powder, everything is crisp and clean. And I think that should do. So I can lift my paper out and I do see a nice impression there and over this I will sprinkle the bonding powder. I have the bonding powder all across my image. I am now going to heat set this and melt that powder first. So this dries clear like our clear embossing powder and now we are all set for foiling it. I will be using the Satin Sepia Fab Foil from WOW and I will first cut this down into parts just making sure I have enough to cover the pattern. And we will do this slowly, step by step. So, first I am going to again heat and melt the powder. And while it's hot, I will place the foil shiny side up and gently give that firm press and slowly lift that. So, that's melted and hot. Now we'll just go in and tap the foil over it. 
and I'm just using my fingers to press nicely. It settle and cool down a bit. I will lift it off and we have quite a distressed foiled pattern there. So I will go over this again. I will not just stop here. I will melt this part again and repeat the same process. So with this process, you definitely need a lot more patience and just do it step by step, slow and steady. But I can only say that the result is totally worth it. Now with a technique like this, you can see there is no worry. You can just heat the same area over and over again and go back in with the foil. And I think it just makes it more easy to do it a little portion at a time and gives us that nice distressed grungy background this also just adds another level of texture and i think creates for such a great background so for now setting this aside let's work on our second technique for the second technique we will be using double-sided tape now i have these double-sided sticky sheets from Alt New. It comes in an A4 size and every time I use them and I am left with some strips, what I tend to do is adhere one side of it to a white cardstock so that I have it handy when I want to use it for a technique. And I will bring out my other color that's Fuchsia Satin to create some flowers with the iris dye. So first I will gently peel the backing and place again shiny side up of the foil stretching it nicely and what I do is just press a little so I will remove a little more of the backing and Use my finger first to nicely crease through and press and make sure the foil adheres to the sticky tape underneath and just do that slowly, step by step. So with these techniques, definitely you need to have a little time and patience. Now I am just going to use the flower dye and I cut the flowers from the, this paper. Now to add a slight detail to these flowers, I am going to use my artist markers and just add a little shading since this is foil. Alcohol based markers are going to work really well. So I am going to try with the Razzleberry and see if that looks good. And just add strokes, so feathered strokes to create a little shading and shadow for these foil flowers. This is Cosmic Berry. And right over this, I am going to add this as a second level of depth and shading. So just feathered strokes, quick and easy. And that's about it. So that creates a nice shading on our flowers. And for the leaves and my stamen, I am not going to use any foil. I will actually use some Yupo paper to create a background to die cut the leaves. And I will blend in greens and yellows. So yellow for the stamen and greens for the leaves. And I am sticking to the same set, the Sunshine Valley Garden set. So I'm going to scribble with the green markers, adding the light, then the mid-tone and the darkest and very randomly without any pattern. I would also like to give credit to my friend Linda Fields who reminded me that markers actually can be used on Yupo paper this way because after all they are alcohol based and work just like alcohol inks. And then I am going to spray some isopropyl alcohol to get this color flowing and just look at that I love that effect I am going to spray as much as I want to to get it all moving and flowing 
move it around here and there and that creates a natural background paper for me to die cut the leaves and I will also now bring in a little yellow and repeat the same step just spray the alcohol and let that do the magic same way for the stamen I am just going to color yellow and just that much and I'm going to set this aside to dry naturally and I can then use this to die cut the leaves and the stamen and the stem. So with everything die cut I am going to set aside the leaves and the stems and first assemble these flowers because I want to create dimensional looking flowers. So what I am going to do is pick out the base that's the non-colored flower a piece of the stamen. I'm going to bring my liquid adhesive as well as foam tape and first glue the stamen down on that base with liquid adhesive. Now with that down in place I am going to cut a piece of foam tape and add that right over at the base of the first flower. I will add a little more liquid adhesive because I want everything to stay intact. And then pick the top flower which is colored and shaded and just give it a little curve and bend it. And slightly offset that as in place it slightly lower than the base flower adhering it there to create a dimensional looking flower. So first I am going to bring back the foiled piece of paper and cut this down into half. So since this was 7 inches I will cut it at 3 and a half. And then now this particular one I will cut it down to 4 and a quarter. So that I create an A2 vertical card and I am going to cut on both the ends and I would like to leave a border so I will just cut that down actually to four instead of four and a quarter. Now I have another piece of white cardstock which is four by five and a quarter and that I am going to use as a mat for my foiled background piece. So the foiled background piece will just go over this here and the entire piece will then go on a black A2 card base creating nice textures and layers for the card. I thought it would be good to add a little pink so I am going to use Rose Quartz and Cosmic Berry here to color the cardstock with pink ink and custom make a colored cardstock with that copper rose gold foil really sparkling and shining over the baby pink. So I'm first going in with rose quartz completely blending that in on the entire background and then I just go in with cosmic berry right at the edges darkening that giving it a nice shadow and border to frame that entire piece. But I'm not going to do that on one side where it actually meets my white card front panel. Now with that done, I want to bring back the foiling on the white card panel. So I've just made a mark as to where my foiled piece ends. And right there, I am going to adhere strips of double-sided tape and repeat the process of applying the foil shiny side up and lifting it off so I have a strip of foil on that. Now with all the three layers adhered all I need to do is create a composition. So for this particular card I am going to use three flowers and I think three flowers just makes for a really nice bouquet. 
so placing the flowers where i want them i think that's a good idea to begin with you start with placing the flowers seeing how that looks and then it's very easy to add in all the foliage around these flowers so if you notice i do have one flower just overlapping between that stamp foil background and the foil lines going into the white space and what this is doing is it is making sure that all the layers are connected everything looks like a part of the same card and i think that empty white space on top helps all the color and the elements pop up even more so just gluing everything down with liquid glue and using foam tape for a few leaves to create dimension i am going to complete this composition I also am using sentiments from the EAP's Gilded Greeting set. I have a bunch of those die cut in my stash. It's very easy to pick anything on the go when creating cards. I decided to pick out another sentiment, Congrats, from the EAP Gilded Greeting set itself because I thought that matched this card perfectly well, better than sending hugs. So choosing that, what I do is use my light pink blending tool which already has some of the lighter pink color on there and just blend that over the congrats so my white is not a stark white it's more of a light pink and just ties in with the card altogether. I think that adds a perfect touch to this. I use rose gold gemstones to embellish this card and complete it. With that done, here is a look at the card complete with all those details, the foiled elements, the flowers and how it all has come together. Now the other piece, I use that to create a horizontal card and a similar concept but I've matted that on white and then on black and completed the card with the flowers. I don't have white space or foiled stripes here because I use the entire background as my card front but that's just another option and a variety and that's how with one single background it's easy to make two cards at one go. I really hope that I've been able to inspire you all with some new ideas today. I look forward to reading your comments and until the next time take care and bye bye.